Hey guys, what's up? How's it going? This is Kazi from cleverprogrammer.com. Uh, we are going to see how this live stream goes. There's a lot of new things that I'm trying out, but basically I'm going to be talking about um, me moving to California and um, kind of what the new plans are at Clever Programmer. So we're going to jump into that. Also, I'm testing a lot of this new setup. So bear with me, please, during this live stream because I'm going to be figuring out if things are working or not and uh, checking a lot of things out. Cool. So it looks like I'm live on YouTube. Now I wanna see if I'm live on Facebook. My PC is being at, my PC is at 100% maxed out. How are you guys doing today? You guys doing good? Hi guys, hi, 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 hello. How's the quality by the way? Is the quality coming out all right to you guys? Yeah, I want to make sure that it's actually showing up on Facebook as well because it's supposed to be um, live streaming on YouTube and Facebook. Cool. We are live on Facebook as well, actually. So that's awesome. Hey, Pedro. Hey, Rodriguez. How are you doing? Perfect on Facebook. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. That's exactly... Uh, what I wanted to know and I'm going to do some magic on here. YouTube and Facebook. On Facebook, could somebody do me a favor and put the link to this video in the comment, like on Facebook? Um, if you can give me the link to this video, that'd be really cool. Oh, my brother just joined. Nice. Okay. He says it's on Facebook as well. Great, great, great. Uh, bro, could you give me the link to this video in the comments? That'd be great. Oh, guys, check this out. This gets fancier. This doesn't just stop here. Oh, wait, that's not the one I want. Let's change this guy. Oops. Whoops, what happened with that guy? Oh well. Let's shoot that over. Nice, okay, cool. I think that should be coming through to you guys. All right, sorry guys, I'm a little quiet. I'll try to say some of the thoughts that are coming at the top of my head. Um, that's not the right link. Let's see. Okay, we have a lot of people on Facebook. Nice. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, awesome. We got a lot of people coming on. All right. Hey, guys, how are you doing? This is Kazi from cleverprogrammer.com. So basically what's going on is uh, I am I have kind of decided that I want to move to this amazing state of California. Um, I was located in Chicago and that's where my office was. And um, yeah, and it's kind of crazy, you know, for, for you guys probably got sick of seeing that white wall behind me and now it's not the white wall. <laughs> we have a little bit of a better background. 
and um and yeah and you know it's really cold it's really cold in chicago it's like freezing so here it's a little bit nicer um not that cold and uh i can actually walk around outside and um and yeah not feel depressed and run into people and actually talk to people so yeah i like that a lot better you know here so far at least in the winter time you know cool hi guys hi 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 um please don't spam in the chats that'd be great what up dog where are you from Mm, 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 mm. Hi, studios. How are you doing? Hi, hi, hi. And uh, by the way, if you guys have questions you want to throw throw at me, uh, go for it. By the way, nobody linked me for the YouTube live. What's going on there, guys? I haven't gotten any... No, I'm not going to miss the cold. I can tell you that much. I'm not going to miss it. Nobody linked me the video. Hmm. You guys are evil. Okay. Let me try another way. I'm trying to do something cool, but it won't work unless I get the link to the live video on Facebook. So I'm going to go get it. Usually I have people helping me with my live streams, but today I don't because uh, my friends are in Chicago. And, um, you know, Cluxio, some of you guys might know, or Mustafa, he a lot of the times helps me with the live stream. And uh, yeah, he's not here, so I'm feeling the pressure right now. But uh, let me try. Let me give it a try. Let's see here. Yeah, everything is like loading super slow. It's like the slowest load you can imagine on the planet. I got to get something better than a laptop. And if you guys have questions, you know, throw them my way and I'll take them on for you. Hi, Sajith. Hi, Harsh. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So hopefully it's not lagging too much or anything, but yeah, basically I want to, I, I'm souping up all of the setup and uh, making it really high quality, everything for you guys. So as you can see, even the live streaming is going to be looking a lot better than before. And I just want to make sure that you know, all the content you guys get is like top quality and there's no sacrifice when it comes to quality. You know, it's like everything is good. Uh, while I'm here, I'm going to be basically now looking for uh, a place um, and trying to find a nice place in California here. And uh, pretty much that's going to turn into like a startup place. So I'm going to be there and then I have a few friends who are going to come and live there. And uh, we're pretty much going to be like running Clever Programmer, you know, together, um, essentially as a team. And so you're going to see a lot better quality material and you're going to see a lot more content kind of on the daily or, yeah, like I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to put out videos every single day, but I'll probably put out more videos than once a week on YouTube, for example. And then also the quality of like all the courses and everything's going to, you know, go next level. So, yeah, I'm really excited about that. I'm going to go turn off this uh, animation. I just have it on because it's kind of cool. Uh, let's see. I still don't have that link. Huh? Let's see.
Wow, it's and looking clean. Quality, like all the courses and everything here. All right, now I want to try something and uh, crossing my fingers that it works well. So we'll see. We shall see, my friend. Okay, so Sri Ram asks, is it possible to learn Python by own? Let me take, so guys, good questions on Facebook. I'm gonna take questions on Facebook and then I'm gonna answer them for you guys, okay? So let's see. Um, all right, guys. While you have me here live with you, I'd like to take on your questions and kind of answer them for you one on one. So take advantage of this opportunity, you know, like don't just put in like random. Like, for example, we have questions like how to become perfect coder. That question is not going to help anybody. OK, and it's too broad. So what I want you to do is like come up with more specific questions, because if I take your question, answer it essentially like you're on a one on one call with me. And if you were on a one on one call with me and you got to ask me one question that I could answer for you, think about what could it be, you know? So, um, yeah, basically take advantage of this opportunity and come up with your good questions and write them down and uh, put them in the comments and I'll answer them for you. All right, so I'm going to put this comment and uh, let's see if we'll be able to show this. All right, cool. So Sriram Krish asks, is it possible to learn Python by own? Um, I think what he's trying to say is, is it possible to learn Python on your own, right, by yourself? Uh, yes, it's very possible. A lot of people learn on their own. And some of the tools that could help you is like a lot of these online resources, right? So you have Coursera, you have Udacity, you have edX. And the list goes on. There's Team Treehouse. And um, there are also a lot of books, like the Computer Science Book by John Zell. It's a good one. So, yeah, there are a lot of resources. Uh, obviously, the best resource on Python is cleverprogrammer.com. Definitely take advantage of that. If you're starting out, I think it's the best resource to get started with. So, all you have to do is go to cleverprogrammer.com and my free course will be there. Sign up for that free course and then it walks you through step by step um, for Python. And we do it in like a project based way. So we build projects. OK. And uh, yeah, that way you get to kind of learn it hands on. So definitely take advantage of that. I'm going to go and see if there are other comments that we have. Hey guys, how's the live stream on YouTube? It's saying something about bad quality, but I just want to make sure if it's good. It's complaining, complaining about something. Not sure what. All right, let's see if there's another good question we got. Get comments. All right, that's a pretty good question. And um, all right, basically the question is, what is the best way to start GUI programming with Python? And let's see. So GUI means graphical user interface. So it's basically like developing something where it's not just code by itself, it's 
taking the code, right? Kind of what's in your head and turning it into an application, something that has clickable buttons. Uh, essentially the code is connected with um, something you can feel and see and touch and click like buttons, graphics on it. That's essentially the idea behind GUI graphical user interface, right? For example, if you're using a software like Final Cut Pro, you don't have to write code. You're working with actual software. You can click buttons and then do things, right? If you have to upload an image somewhere, you don't have to go and find the path of the file and exactly where it's located. That would be too much work. You just click upload and then it gives you everything that's like you click point and click, right? That's GUI. So the best way to learn it is, you know, look up tutorials on Tekinter. I have a course on this, my OOP course, which is currently closed. You can't access it right now, but it goes through how Tekinter works. But you can look online for Tekinter in Python and uh, it's spelled T-K-I-N-T-E-R. And it teaches you, um, basically it's a framework to help you build local apps on your computer that are GUI apps. So people can actually click on it and instead of having to write code, they can make it work just by point click pressing the keyboard. For example, if you wanna make a game like ping pong or pong on your computer, you will use something like graphical user interface like GUI development and make that game in Python on your computer. And John Zell's book, Computer Science, uh, Python programming, I think it's called, touches on it a little bit. And then also online courses on Tekinter touch on it. And uh, yeah, I just want you to go and start throwing yourself in there and then take the code from those games and see the things that you can change in there, right? So like, for example, one thing you could do is just like find working code somewhere online that runs a game like Pong or some other game, copy paste it, click the play button so it plays and you're like, okay, awesome. And then like start messing around. Like maybe there's a velocity variable and it says 80 on it. Change it to 20. Does it slow down the speed of the ball when you hit it? Maybe there's a variable called paddle width. If you change it to 10 instead of 60, does a paddle now become smaller? So yeah, like throw yourself in there and then kind of learn like that, you know, like earlier I was trying to live stream to my uh, private group, the profitable programmer group, um, all the students who joined that course, it's currently closed. And I was telling them to accelerate your success. The secret to accelerating your success and getting success fast is accelerating your failure. And if you can accelerate how fast you fail and how quickly you fail, you'll be in a pretty good um, spot because you're going through that iterative process pretty quickly. You're learning what doesn't work and you're going through it and then you improve. So look to fail and look to fail fast, fail fast, fail often. And that's how you'll improve a lot and how you'll get better a lot in everything in life, coding, fitness, dating, whatever it is, just fail often and you'll improve, okay? That's how you get better at anything. Use fear and failure as your navigation in life. For example, if you go to the gym and you're just lifting five pound dumbbells, you're always succeeding, or if you're squatting an empty bar, you're always succeeding, but you're not improving. They're two different things. How you're gonna improve is by picking up a weight that's gonna push you to your limits to where you're going to fail or be close to failing. And then you can use that as your navigation to then know, okay, here's how I can improve and go beyond this level. So you definitely want to have something along the lines of that, you know, your fear and your failure as that navigation and use that when it comes to learning as well look to fail and look to jump into things quickly, okay? And don't wait around, don't be like, oh, am I ready yet to do GUI development? Or am I ready yet to do X or Y? Just jump in and do it and um, fail in it and then you'll improve fast, okay? Uh, 
Let's see if you have some good questions. All right, Rizwan Khan asks, I have a question. He says, why do you prefer coding with a Mac than Windows? I sometimes hear people saying it's better for Windows. Um, I love Mac and uh, I am not a fan of Windows. I have two like crazy Windows laptops like sitting right by me. They're like super powerful and yeah, I don't use them at all. I, I mean, it's just personal preference, guys. Everybody has a preference. Um, some practical reasons why I give you, uh, why, well, that I'll give you why I prefer Mac over Windows. Let me just say this first. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. You can become a coder using Windows or Mac, okay? So before you go crazy, I just want to put that out there. So don't break your budget and buy a Mac after listening to me. I'm just going to tell you personally my experience and why I like it more. When you're coding and let's say you're using something like Python, there are a few simple things that are already helpful. First of all, Python comes already installed on Mac. So that's kind of useful. But the more useful things are the terminal and the command line of Python. Command line is pretty much where you're going to do most of your coding from. Okay. Once you become a little bit better, you're going to be doing a lot of stuff from the command line. And uh, if you're a beginner, you might not be touching it right now, but later this is something that's really important. Windows command lines is really whack. It's really, really not that good. <laughs> okay, let me put it like that. Um, if you have to follow a tutorial and you're trying to find a pro, let's say you're trying to follow a tutorial to do a Python project, okay? So you're looking up online and somebody's showing you how to build this app with Python or how to build this game with Python. You're just following along. All those tutorials are made for Mac or Ubuntu or something else, like some kind of Linux. But for Windows, a lot of the times they'll have like, here's a simple way of doing it in Mac, but if you wanna do it in Windows, click this link and then it takes you into a completely new place and it's a different way of doing it for Windows. So a lot of the times tutorials are a little bit more difficult and different for Windows because of how you know, even their paths and their variables and all of that work. Um, yeah, I don't want to get too deep into it, but suffice it to say that you're going to save yourself a lot of headache and a lot of um, pain if you are coding on a different OS than a Windows. But again, it's definitely possible there are hundreds of thousands of developers that became developers using a laptop, like a Windows laptop. There are also some online solutions you can use to program in. Again, this is not that big of a problem once you're advanced. So I'm not talking about anybody who's advanced. Once you're advanced, you'll make everything work. <laughs> but when you're more like beginner and intermediate and getting started, Windows will just throw more hurdles your way. That just makes certain things difficult, okay? So I'm going to leave that at that. Um, and yeah, let's move on. Uh, don't copy-paste questions. There's some good questions I see, but they're just like spamming it. And um, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna incentivize that. So just guys, <laughs> don't don't spam, please. That's a good question. I'm trying to bring it onto my screen. Give me a second here. Okay, Henry Mong asks, why do programmers and developers use multi-screens? 
Um, that's a good question. I actually have multi screens right now. This one here and then this one here. But obviously, it's also because I'm broadcasting and I want to see what the hell's going on. But why we a lot of times use m more screens or like um, we'll have an external monitor when we're coding is because when you're coding, you have something like PyCharm or Sublime Text or an Atom open, and then which is your coding editor, and then you have a command line tool open. And then you also are doing research on something like Stack Overflow. And then you might have something like GitHub open. You can't fit all of those screens into one place. I mean, you can, but it'll look really small, especially on a laptop. So a lot of times when you have multiple screens, you can have coding on like one side and then you have your research on the other side. And this way you can code and look at the research at the same time. Okay. Simple answer for that. All right, let's take this question on. Um, oh yeah, somebody asked me what else inspired you to move to California. I forgot to mention, uh, there's a lot of stuff happening here. Like, Every, there's a lot of like life here and a lot of people here and a lot of people to connect with. So as being somebody who's creative and into um, connecting with people and building something big and being an entrepreneur, this is like the hub. This is where you want to be. So I'm probably going to be living in L.A. And there are a ton of other YouTubers and content creators out there. And when you connect with like minded people or people who are better than you, not just like-minded, like people who are next level above you, right? I'm a student of life. I don't want to be in any place where I am like, you know, at a spot where I don't have other people who are ahead of me or I can learn from. And in, in Chicago, that's not, it's not like that's the case, but it's just that there's no like central hub for YouTubers or people who create content or people who market online or people who make online courses. It's like not that. So in California, in LA, and I'm going to be living in Hollywood, there is, there are a lot of people you can connect with and they're all trying to create content. They're all like trying to better themselves, improve themselves. They're like all goal oriented, hustle, want to be fit, want to help the world, want to grow their channels, want to grow their business, want to provide more value to the world. Like it just keeps going on. So that's kind of what I want to do. You know, I want to be around that kind of energy. I want to be around those people. So I'm always inspired and I want to do better than um, what I have been doing, you know? And um, my goal is to build a bigger team as well for Clever Programmer. And here, it, this is the place to connect with other people as well. And this is what what will help me like grow this channel even more and connect with better people. So that's another one of the big reasons um, for, for coming here. You know, I, I meet tons of YouTubers here like every day. And again, it's not just about YouTube. Like I want to build a business and I meet tons of people who are building a business as well. Cause clever programmer, it's not just a YouTube channel, you know, like, um, there are a lot of coding channels, but that's just all they are. And our goal is to become bigger than that. And that's what we're working on. You know, so we are, we have uh, our new course, the profitable program before we had our OOP course, which taught people how to create graphical user interfaces. We had a course, we have a course on learning basics of Python, but then very quickly, what we moved on to now is our new course, The Profitable Programmer. And the goal here is to get you like real world clients and actual business with Python. 
and focus on getting you paid, breaking out of your nine to five, getting you to, you know, it's not about like all of us traveling, you know, it's um more important to me is that freedom and like not having shackles on me. And I think that's what's important to a lot of you guys as well. Maybe it's important to you. Let me know. But that's one of the goals to help people live the lifestyle they want, you know, and uh, Python and programming and software development is kind of a tool for that is a vehicle for that end result. And uh, that's what I want to focus on. And yeah, even this new course that we're creating, I mean, I can already tell you um, it's the best Python course that there ever is going to be. Not in terms of like how much technical stuff am I teaching you and we're going to build 3,000 apps. But the goal here is to get you results and fast. And then also the quality of the course. Like I'm so excited about this course, honestly. Uh, well, peop our students just like went through week one and uh, they're really excited and they love it. And uh, now week two is going to be getting released soon. And, uh, and this week they're going to be covering like the fundamentals of Python. Week one is all about like mindset and hacks and yeah, it's pretty powerful. And uh, some of the students in the in the course are already, uh, you know, creating a group and then they're getting on those group calls and uh, helping each other out and collaborating, which I thought was pretty cool. So good job on that, guys. I don't want to say a wrong name, but I think it was like Thomas who's running the group. So uh, I, I hope I'm saying I hope that your name is Thomas. And uh, if you're listening to this, thank you. That, that's a very, very great, great killer initiative. Good job on that. And yeah, everybody's connecting and learning from each other. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, another one of the things I'm going to be doing on Facebook and Instagram is I'm going to go live with the people that are um, on the stream. There's a way on Facebook and uh, Instagram to actually uh, go live. Let me remove this thing here. Let's see if there are any other questions. Um, let's see. Okay. I'm going to read some YouTube comments. YouTube people are awesome and I need to give them love as well. So let's see what's going on here. What things to, do I need to know to start learning Django? Fundamentals of Python. And if you know like the basics of Python, you're ready to learn Django. Um, yeah. Uh, is C a good language to start? I wouldn't recommend C. I would recommend Python, number one. Um, JavaScript is another good one to start with. Scratch, if you have extra time start with scratch um yeah all right i'm going to take some questions and uh, answer them for your beautiful faces. So let's go. All right, what is the best Python editor? What is the best editor in Python? Let's take this question on. Where'd it go? It just vanished. Hmm. 
certain things are just not showing and uh sorry guys i'm trying to figure out this live stream stuff at the same time as answer your questions and run between all these things and it's just my tiny laptop today so sorry about any uh little problems we're having i'm trying my best to fix them for you and not drop the ball okay here it is what is the best editor in python um so there are different editors you have sublime text you could use atom uh, my favorite one is PyCharm. Not something I recommend if you're a beginner to use it. I, I would say like start with the pure basics idle, like I-D-L-E. Start with that if you're starting out. Then promote yourself to something like Sublime or Atom. Then two, three, four months of using that, I would say go to PyCharm. It's a beast, and uh, once you set it up, it's when you can lock it in, it's, I mean, nothing even comes close. I have my setup pretty dialed in with that, but that took a long, long time to just dial it in. But yeah, once you soup up your pie charm, nothing even comes close. But uh, I would say wait on it first, uh, become proficient with programming, and then get to the editor because the editor itself can be a whole new learning curve so you don't want to be a beginner and then also be learning how to use uh, integrated development environment and ide like pycharm you want to just stick with basics okay so good question Maher. um yeah so guys this is kind of the reason i'm moving out here i think it's just cool and uh, it's awesome and uh, yeah, you guys are going to be seeing a lot of new content, a lot of new cool stuff. So stay excited for that. Thank you guys for coming here and watching this live stream. My computer and everything is super slow and crashing. So I can't even really uh, see the things I need to be seeing. Uh, and hopefully in the next live stream, it'll be better and a little bit more streamlined for you guys. Okay. So thank you guys so much for being here as always. I love your faces off and I'll see you in the next video. And now we're going to go and close it. Okay.